Hey, Josh Powers here with Quixel. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about Mixer's new mask stack, where we'll utilize procedural components to build the height data for this tile surface. For those of you who have already been using it for a while, you know the power and flexibility Mixer has to offer. As I demonstrated with the previous tutorial, with just a few adjustments to the blend settings, you can transform a couple of Megascan surfaces into a completely new material. But what if you can't find exactly what you're looking for in the library? Even though the massive Megascans library is growing larger every day, with no end in sight, we know that there are times where it might be difficult to find the perfect match for your texture. This is where the power and flexibility of the new mask stack comes into play. With the new mask stack, you'll have the ability to create stunning custom surfaces using a variety of non-destructive procedural components. Mask stack allows you to quickly build up, iterate, and mix shapes and patterns with an artist-friendly interface that is incredibly easy to work with. So whether you want to use it to build your height data or simply use it to add even more control to your surface blends, the new mask stack will help you pump out high quality surfaces faster than ever. So let's get started. I'll first start off by adding a solid layer that I'll use as a base layer, and then I'll give it a dark brownish red color. I'm then going to duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl D and then give it a quick name. Blending from below, I'll push the threshold up to around 0.5 and I'll leave the other settings alone. Now I'll add the new mask stack by pressing the button in the lower left corner of the Layers tab. The mask stack will allow me to construct a mask for my layer using a variety of different components and modifiers that are both image-based and procedural. So to start off, I'll select the square pattern from the Components menu. Within the mask component, I have several settings I can adjust. In the square pattern, for example, I can adjust repetition, the spacing between the tiles, offset to give a staggered brick look, as well as jitter intensity, which will give each of the tiles varying heights. And jitter itself has multiple settings, giving me a lot of control over the component's output. For this mix, I'm going to keep jitter off and set the repeat tile amount to 1, and then I'll set spacing to 2. Now I'm going to go to the Mask Modifier menu and add a Transform. Transform gives me a few options to be able to offset, rotate, and tile or scale the mask below it. So to create the angled cuts for the tile, I'll set both offsets to 0.5. I turn off tiling so I can unlock the scale option, and then I'll rotate 45 degrees by setting the rotation to 0.5, and then I'll scale the results to 0.3, which gives me triangles on all four corners. Next, I'll set the mask to multiply, which gives me that gap I established when I set the spacing to 2. As you probably guessed, I don't want these triangles to be popping up, and if you hit 9 on the keyboard, you can go into the layer mask mode and see that the triangles are white, which is what will be revealed on this layer, and I want the opposite of that. So to fix this, I'll add an invert modifier, and if I hold down Alt and then click on invert, I will layer clip it to the transform modifier directly below it, which means the invert will only affect the transform layer below. Now that I have the shape of the tile laid out, I'll add another transform modifier and I'll set the X and Y repetitions to 5 to give me the base layout of my tiles. Now the edges are looking a little sharp, so this is a perfect time to use the bevel modifier. Unlike a Gaussian blur, the bevel modifier will give a slope to the edges instead of merely softening them. These angles will give the tiles a lot more depth and visual interest than a more abrupt cutoff. For these tiles, I want the bevel to be pretty small and had found that 0 0.043 would give me the results I'm looking for. So I have these gaps between the tiles that I need to fill, and instead of setting up a complex series of patterns and modifiers, I'm going to simply use an invert modifier. Of course, you'll notice right away that while this did fill in those gaps, it also inverted the main tiles I created, which is obviously not what I want. This is where we can see the power of the mask stack at work. First, I'll change the Invert modifier to Add. At first glance, this is also not the results I want, but if I add a Bevel modifier to the stack and then layer clip it to the Invert modifier, suddenly those gaps are filled in perfectly. I bump up the width to the Bevel to 1.1, and I think that's looking pretty good. So I'll add a Brightness and Contrast modifier, and also layer clip it to the Invert layer by Alt-clicking the layer. 
And then I set the brightness to just under 0.5 and the contrast to a little over 2. So this is looking pretty good, but I noticed that the filler tiles are sticking up a little above the larger tiles. To fix this, I'm going to use a normalize modifier. The normalize modifier will essentially stretch the brightest and lowest values to their extremes. So in this case, we have a pretty light gray on top of the filler tiles and then a darker gray between the tiles. The normalize modifier will bump the light gray up to white and the darker gray down to black and then adjust the values accordingly for everything in between. The problem I have now is that this actually made the height of the filler tiles even greater. To fix this, I'll simply change the blending of the modifier to add which will only add the brighter values of the modifier to the rest of the mask beneath it. Now I have a smooth, flush tile pattern to work with. Next up, I'm ready to add some weathering to the tiles. I'll start off by adding a solid layer. I'll use the color picker to sample a diffuse color and then darken it a little bit. Blending from above, I'll lower the threshold a tiny bit to negative 024 I drop the opacity to around 0.65 and then set wrap to base to a little over 0.4 to retain some of the tile shape beneath. I then max out remove base details. I'll add a mask stack to this layer and my first component will be the curvature component. Most likely you're already familiar with what a curvature map is and the modifier acts the same except that we can adjust the settings in real time to change up our results. By pressing 9 on the keyboard again, I can go into layer mask mode and we can see how the modifier settings will impact the mask. This is a very powerful modifier that lets me quickly isolate edge detail from the height data of the layers below. Pressing 1 on the keyboard to return to PBR mode, I move the sample range up to 3 and then squeeze the level sliders together a little past the halfway mark on the slider to give me a nice crisp edge detect on my tiles so I can start building up a wear mask for them. And a Gaussian blur will soften those edge highlights significantly. And then I throw a bevel modifier on top of the blur to add a bit of slope before lowering the opacity to around 0.6, and then setting the layer blend to multiply. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but we're using this all to slowly build up this mask, and each layer has a role. Next up, I'll add a brightness and contrast. Having played with it a bit before, I decided to move the brightness to negative 0.311 and I boost the contrast up to about 5.8. I toss on another normalize, set it to add, and then drop the opacity to a little over 0.6. Now I'm starting to see some pretty strong erosion happening on the edges of the tile, which helps break up the really sharp, perfect angles we had before. It does read a little bit stylized at the moment, since the erosion is all pretty uniform, but I'll fix that by adding a Perlin noise component. All of the noise components have the same settings. I can adjust the seed, amplitude, frequency, which is going to change how broad or fine the noise is, octaves, lacunarity, and persistence. In this case, I decided to set the seed to negative 63, max out the amplitude, and set the frequency to about 4. I also set the octaves to 4, which adds a bit of chunky noise to the edges, and then I leave the lacunarity and persistence alone. I set it to overlay so that it blends with the underlying mask data, and then drop the opacity down to just under 0.4. Now I'm starting to see some more irregularities in the edges, which I'll enhance even more with another noise component. But first, I add another normalize modifier and reduce the opacity a little to help soften some of the sharper, more jagged edges I created with that Perlin noise. I'll add another noise, but this time I select a Whirly 1. I set the seed to negative 74, and then crank up the amplitude to 4.5. I also drop the frequency to a little under 2 so that the shapes of the noise are a bit larger in scale. I'll break up the edges by cranking up the octaves to 6. I set lacunarity to 1.972, which I knew was the exact number I wanted and then persistence to 0.615. For this layer, I'm going to set the blend to multiply and lower the opacity a little bit. As you can see, we now have some nice irregular looking edges that feel like they've been worn down over years of use. And because the mask is non-destructive, I can go back at any point and adjust settings to see the results update in real time. For example, if I pull up the brightness on this modifier, 
I can add even more erosion and wear to the edge of the tiles. I actually kind of like the looks of these changes, so I decided to leave the brightness value a little higher than what I said it before. Alright, now it's time to start adding some mega scan surfaces to the mix. For the base material, I use this concrete damage surface. I max out the threshold and set wrap to base to 1. I set both the high and low frequency to 0 to eliminate the height data from the surface, which will make this layer have no impact on the height data I created from the mask below. I also go ahead and set the remove base details to 0. I give the diffuse color an orange tint by punching in a hex value I had already chosen for this example. I then give it a bit of a shine by raising the gloss value. And then lastly, I drop the repetitions down to 1 for both the X and Y. Next up, I'm going to add this concrete surface. I'll blend from above and drop the threshold to around negative 0.5. I'll max out the wrap to base and zero out the low frequency. I also drop the radius quite a bit to sharpen the edge of the blend. I drop the repetitions down to 1 for this surface as well. I want to give this layer a similar orange color, but slightly darker, so I type in a hex value I wrote down earlier. And then I nudge up the gloss just a little bit. Now I have some nice pitting and some other smaller details on the surface of the tiles. However, I'm noticing that the diffuse is looking a little flat. The orange is just a bit too consistent across the board, so I want to add a bit of miscoloration to it. To do this, I'll duplicate my first surface layer by selecting the layer and pressing Ctrl D. And then I drag it to the top of the stack. I'll use the hex value once again to set the color to a yellowish hue. And I drop the gloss to give this layer a bit of a more dull appearance. I switch the blend to be from above and drop the threshold down into the negative range to about negative 0.5. I bring the radius down a smidge and then drop preserve details down to around 2.2, as well as lower the opacity a little bit. Now that I have the blend settings adjusted, I'm going to mask it further by adding a mask stack. For this, I'm going to simply add a purlin noise. I'll pick a random seed and then set the amplitude to 4.7 and the frequency to 1 to make the noise a bit more broad and pronounced. I also bump up the octaves a bit for a little noise along the edges. I'll drop a brightness and contrast on top of that and set the brightness to negative 0.465 and then the contrast to 0.775 to soften the blend of the mask. Adding this one layer really helped break up the monotony of the two orange colored layers beneath it and it helped enhance the weathering from the tile layers I created below. I want to add some additional miscoloration to the edges of the tiles so I'll add a new solid layer for that. I give the diffuse a brownish red color and then I set the gloss to black. I blend from above and max out the threshold and wrap the base before adding a mask stack. This time I'm going to use a normal component. The normal component will generate my mask from the normal information based on the angle and tilt I give it. So if we hit 9 on the keyboard again, you can see as I adjust the angle of this gizmo over here, the mask will update to highlight the normals of my surface. I'm going to set the angle to somewhere around 70 degrees for this instance, and the tilt will be around 42 degrees. I move the lower range slider up to around 0.84, and then nudge the upper range down to about 0.94. Now, just as I can do with the surface layers to the left, I can duplicate this mask component by pressing Ctrl D. I'll grab the angle handle and swing it around to the opposite side, setting it to about negative 132 degrees. I then pull back on the tilt to about 60 degrees. I set this to add so that only the white areas show through to the mask beneath it. I want to reduce some of the effect this has on top of the tiles, so I add a brightness and contrast, and then lower the brightness value and increase the contrast value. Now I have a bit of miscoloration predominantly on the edges of the tile, but the mask is still a bit too heavy handed, especially on the top parts of the tile. So I add a bevel modifier with a pretty low width and then drop the opacity to about half to make the impact of this layer a bit more subtle. 
All right, so this is looking pretty good, but it still needs something, particularly something to fill in between the tiles. So I'm going to add another surface layer. I select this Thai beach sand surface to act as my grout. I pull up the threshold to about 0.5 and lower the radius a fair bit. I set the wrap to base to about 0.6 so that, again, I can retain some of the surface's height data while still adhering somewhat to the tile height data I've created. I then set the remove base details to 6, which really added a lot of visual interest to the grout and tile blend. I also set the low frequency of the sand to 4 so that I get a bit more randomness to how the layer blends based on the properties I set above. Now I'm going to set the diffuse of the sand to something darker and slightly less contrasting to the orange color of the tiles, as well as nudge up the gloss. This looks good, but I'll tweak it even further by adding a mask stack. I use the curvature component and immediately check the invert options so that my results are down in the divots rather than the edges of the tiles. I pull the level sliders together about halfway to tighten the curvature mask's edges. This is looking really good, but I did notice that some of the sand bleeding on top of the tiles is looking a little noisy and fake. So I add a quick Gaussian blur to the stack and give it a pretty low setting. This allows me to keep the sharpness of the mask, but I eliminated all that noise around the patches of sand on top of the tiles. Alright, I think I'll call that a wrap. As you can see, in a very short amount of time, we were able to build a believable tile surface using a combination of Megascan surfaces with the new mask stack inside Quixel Mixer. And like I mentioned before, the mask stack is non-destructive, so I can go back and play with any of the settings to alter the look and feel of the surface in real time, allowing me to quickly create, iterate, and implement my materials into a project. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for understanding the new mask stack feature in Mixer, and how procedural masking pairs so well with Megascan surfaces to give you the ability to create something truly unique with incredibly fast results. Be sure to grab the latest release of Mixer, which is available for free during the beta. Thanks for watching.